Um, all right, we're going to call the Board of Public Works to order on June 22nd, 2023. Uh, Patty, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Moriarty? Here. Commissioner Shea? Here. Alderman O'Brien? Present. Mayor Donches? Yes, present. Uh, first motion is to approve the agenda. Uh, Alderman, excuse me. Commissioner Moriarty? Move to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item three, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve the minutes of the Board of Public Works meeting of May 25th, 2023. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion, motion passes. Now we have a public comment period, and if the Lions were here, we would make a presentation, but I don't think they are yet. But if they show up later, we could just go yes. back. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Jeff LaFleur for being Employee of the Year. Oh, congrats. Congratulations. Well deserved. The Lions trusted to be here to present that. So I'm glad to Any other that. public comment anyone wants? All right, Board of Alderman Referrals. Uh, item A, Commissioner Moriarty. Uh, R23-123. Authorizing the granting of an easement to Penichuk Waterworks Inc. for the construction and maintenance of a water line. Attachments have been updated. And we're looking for a favorable recommendation. Good question. Uh, oh no. City Engineer Hudson would like to <coughs> speak to that at all. Yeah, I think Attorney Perlman's here as well, but just uh, can give a brief Thank summary. Or, or Attorney Perlman can. Yeah. Why don't you call it up? Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the board, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I'm impressed with this uh, new facility. Um, I, uh, I'm here on behalf of Raisin and Homes Elite. Um, Raisin and Homes Elite have purchased the uh, Barker property on Bartlett Street um, in March of 2022. Uh, and through the planning board process, we um, have had 22 new lots approved um, at the corner of Bartlett and Wellington. Um, and at the time when we were going through this process, we knew we had a water problem uh, with water pressure and capacity, and, but we didn't know how bad that water pressure was or lack of water pressure. So in meeting with Penacheck, um, we uh, came to the conclusion that the best solution to provide water to 22 new homes was to run a water line from Manchester Street through Greeley Park to the Raisin and property. Uh, and initially we proposed a, a line to go right through the field where the disc golf course is. Um, and um, with comments from Ms. Fato and uh, Mr. Hudson, uh, we had a site meeting in Lake Bay and we came to the um, uh, water line location that's going to run right along the existing Greeley Park Road. Um, and the benefit of this water line not only provides water service and hydrant uh, service to uh, Raisin, Raisin's project, but 40 some odd homes uh, in the north end, this part of the north end, will get will have their water pressure double um, as a result. So it, it, it works for um, everyone. We have um, uh, an agreed upon route. We have the easement as um, has been approved by Attorney Leonard, and we are looking for a favorable recommendation back to the Board of Alderman. We have favorable rec recommendations from the Planning Board, Public Penetrative Water Special Committee, um, and so this is our last stop before we go back for a second reading. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have? Uh, well, um, Commissioner Lemon is, has arrived at 4.06 p.m. Any uh, questions? Oh, um, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, too bad I don't see the uh, director for the Park Rec Division because this did involve, as we looked at the map, correct, Mr. Perlman? That's correct. But he, I, I guess, is in agreement. There was no negative that was discussed at the Board of Aldermen on that, and I think it works with the, uh, you know, the sewer system, which is another matter. But there was concern, like you say, with the water pressure, which benefits the whole neighborhood equally as well. Uh, for fire protection and everything else, as well as the homes. Yes. Yes. Anyone else? All right, the motion is to recommend. Oh, I, oh, if I may. Commissioner Shea. Thank you. Um, 
Is is this going parallel to that access road or yeah? So the road won't be disturbed. It it, it runs parallel to the road, but the road has a curve to it. Uh, I have a, I have I have plans um, that uh, were, were submitted, um, and so there's a uh, a portion of the road that is going to be uh, dug up to install the water line and. Um, uh, the city, that, that set of plans is great. The city, through Mr. Hudson, has agreed to, uh, that the city, Raisin will, will, will be installing the water line, the city will be doing the repaving um, of, the, um, of the water line. So here's a, yeah, that's a, that's a better plan. Uh, I have a smaller version, but it's easier to see uh, with the small version. But this. Um, you can see we run parallel to the, um, the north side of the uh, Greeley Park Road, and then we cut through it uh, right by the monkey bars, probably uh, halfway down uh, the road, and then to get to the uh, bar, uh, the Grayson Inn property. What's the landscaping going to be on the, the, once you leave the road? The, um, this is all grass to the north side of this, um, and so we're going to re um, topsoil and seed. Um, and then as we get over here, we do have some tree cutting um, as, we, as we approach the raisin and property. Uh, and those trees will be replaced, you know, there won't be a fully mature replacement, but they'll, they'll be replaced, you know, as necessary as we get in, as we get closer to the uh, raisin and uh, property. And is the developer covering all the costs of, of repaving or how is that working out? No, the, the developer, Raisin and Homes, is go going to cover the cost of the installation of the water line, the piping and actual construction, um, and the uh, reseeding and, and topsoil. And the city is going to be repaving this portion of, um, of Greeley Park Road. And then Raisin will pick up um, you know, this section in here from the road to the property line. And then Raisin and obviously will be running the water line throughout its, the project and bringing the water line down to the intersection of Bartlett and Wellington. And then Penichuk will pick up from there um, with uh, installation of new pipes so to uh, take advantage of the added water pressure. Yes. Um, if, if, if we, do we need a newly paved road there already or what, what's, where are we at with that? <clears throat> So yeah, I can speak to that. Yeah, yes, I mean the, the, the road could stand to be repaved. There's, uh, you know, it hasn't been paved in a long time, so it makes sense to do that. We kind of viewed that as a concession to the applicant's willingness to revise the water line layout because originally it was going to go. They have an existing easement which runs through the existing disc golf area, and it was going to cut up through the woods, and it would it would have had to cut a swath of the woods that would have been visible from Manchester Street. So we. We engaged and uh, walked it, and they agreed to revise the line and go up the road. But then we had a discussion about the, you know, added cost for that and that sort of thing. So um, I think the city, uh, the city's willing to do that repaving, just because it is kind of a, it's an emergency access road, really is what it is. But it's not a, uh, it's not like paving, uh, you know, West Hollow Street. It's going to yeah. be a, a lesser burden. But it, it did make sense for the city to pick up that part of it since they were willing to accommodate our requested alignment. And this will be di less disruptive to that kind of uh, little amphitheater hillside there. Right. Um, and right. the park will be able to be used for a longer period of time. Yeah, the thought process off. was that alignment works well because it's a road. It's always going to be kept open uh, for the emergency access purposes. Um, so it kind of made sense to run up there. And then where they have to cut into their development is tucked around the corner uh, woods-wise. So it should be less visible from Manchester Street. We'd otherwise be disrupting like a full corridor like through the middle of that field and it would be off limits for reseeding and all these things and yeah. all, the, all the live action role play people would be upset. Um, so, okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right, anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, next item B. Commissioner Shea. Uh, authorizing the, uh, the motion is to authorize the acceptance of an electronic scoreboard located at Murray Field donated to the city by the Kyle uh, Bendiger Memorial Trust and uh, establishing an expendable trust fund related to the scoreboard funded by appropriations. Okay, so 
So I can speak to that, Mayor? That's yeah, okay. please. So this scoreboard uh, was donated a while back by the Kyle Bettinger Foundation and uh, was never formally accepted, uh, which, which needs to happen. Um, so we're, we're doing that now. Um, but um, we are also establishing an expendable trust fund. So we, well, our intent is, is to put... And, and this is actually the sponsors of this are, are um, Alderman uh, Como and Clee. And the intent here is that um, we will put out to bid the scoreboard, the <coughs> advertising piece of the scoreboard, and then whatever funds that we are able to get from that, that um, billboard will be um, split between Cal Ripken and Little League. So Cal Ripken will get 55%, Little League, 45%. And the reason for that is, is because of the size of the two organizations. So, And both organizations are agreeable to that. So, so, so I think it's a one-way. Yeah. Thank you. Remind me where Murray Field is. Is that the one in front of Holman? Right yes, there? that's one right near Holman, correct. Is that the same field where we had the issue with the electronic uh, lighting sign? With the electronic lighting no, sign? No. Uh, Somebody had an ad that was on. Yes, yes. Lauren, the, yes, Lauren Morse. Yes. So that's the same scoreboard. That's the same scoreboard, correct. So we're replacing that scoreboard? No, we're not replacing it. What we're gonna, what we'll be doing is, right now, it was, it was never. It's on city property. It was never put out to bid. So now we're going to put it out to, to bid, and then whatever the proceeds are from that, um, the, not the scoreboard, but the billboard. It's on the back side of the billboard right. of the scoreboard will um, benefit the two organizations, Little League and Calverton. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Because they they are very dependent. I, I should probably also add that those both of those organizations are dependent upon fundraising um, to survive. Uh, years ago, the city did um, provide them with more money, and and uh, probably about 25 years ago, they became independent and and uh, rely on fundraising to be able to operate. And, they both serve um, a lot of Nashua kids, so. Uh, uh, adding to that, mm -hmm. Director, so the state of New Hampshire had an issue with the sign. So how was that resolved? So the, the because this, the sign is it's on city property, but it is in the state right of way, it needs to be permitted through the state. So the city will take care of that process of making sure that it's permitted, permitted annually. Correct. Any other questions, comments? Commissioner Shea. And is there, I imagine it's in here, is there a duration of at the advertising and like a uh, uh, period of like resubscription or, or going back out to bid? Uh, you know, I don't think that we actually have uh, decided how long that will be, but it will have to be for a period of time because yeah. somebody will have to pay for the, you know, the advertising and and all of that, um, the graphics and, and everything that will go up. So I would say it will probably be for like a five-year period of time, but we have not put it up to bid yet. Okay. But, but we it, intend to do so soon. But it will be defined. It will be defined, yes. Yep. Wasn't there at some point talk of if there was any money left over that it would go to Parks and Rec? There was, there was some discussion of that. Yeah, but that didn't happen when it got to the Board of Aldermen? Not yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, 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 I'm hearing rumblings there. There could be some... Okay. Uh, th there could be some changes, but I, I'm not yet. Okay. This is the legislation that we've been sent. So. Um, in the future, I could bring that up, but that wasn't part of the presentation that we had heard. And uh, so this is like the 11th hour, and I apologize okay. on the board, but we didn't foresee that. Yeah. Maybe that might be worth taking a second view as uh, time goes on. Is we'll that, th this has not gone to committee, I don't believe yet, has it, Alderman um, O'Brien? I am not too sure. I, I don't, yeah, I don't think it has. I think yeah. it's just, yeah. So it could, and I certainly will bring that back if it does get revised. Can we have that, you and I have that conversation? If Absolutely. that's what uh, this board wants, I'll be willing to see if we can uh, negotiate that with uh, Alderman Como. Sure. Um, I, I am of the mind that this scoreboard was donated to the city for the purpose of the benefit of the, the baseball leagues, is that correct? Yes. Um, and was there a scoreboard there before, or this is a whole new 
item. There was a scoreboard there that needed to be that replaced. Needed to be fully replaced. Yeah, and the Kyle Benninger Foundation was very generous. In did, did the city pay some portion of, of the replacement, or it was fully donated? Fully donated. Yeah. I, I think in the, in the spirit of the donation um, and the the use of the space, um, I'm of the mind that uh, you know I, I don't I don't see a need for Park and Recreation to take some portion of the proceeds from advertising. Um, I think that a uh, good example of precedent, and I could misunderstand this, but um, Holman Stadium, um, the advertising in the outfield um, goes towards the operation of the ball club. Correct. Um, and they, they manage that program. Uh, I know that this will require some light management from the city, but it, I mean, it shouldn't be too involved. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, for, for me personally, I'd, I'd be glad to see uh, the proceeds benefit the leagues um, in a in a proportionate manner. I, I know we're okay. not. I know that's not like the topic, but um, you know, just for food for thought. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, uh, Mayor, you know, along that line, though, uh, Commissioner Shea. So the scoreboards lit, advertising are lit. That's electricity. Who's paying the electric bill? Is Cal Ripken? No, the city. The city would. No, the, the city the city would. Yeah. So why should the city take it? I think there should be something coming back to pay for the electricity. The other thing is there was quite a lot of heated discussion, especially because the city does not charge the kind of fees for the fields that most municipalities charge. So that was why the thought was if the, there was money, it maybe some of it should go back to the city. I, Commissioner Shea. Um, for... For the, the proceeds to from the um, cell tower at Holman Stadium, um, is that attached to that property as far as like our funding mechanisms go? And if so, um, is that ball field considered a part of the Holman Stadium property or is it a separate piece of property? It, it's a separate piece separate of property. Piece. It's cared for by the, by the leaves. So that'd be uh, no, maintenance, isn't it? No, or? it used to be, uh, Mayor, uh, but it, it's now we take care of that field, Marine oh, Field. Then. Okay. Yeah, but you're you're correct that it used to be. It used to be uh, Cal Ripton used to take care of it. In fact, I know the person who took care of it quite well. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> we're seeing about their cutting a lawn. Yeah. What are you doing out there? Yeah. <laughs> and and what do we do as far as um, uh, like? Advertising banners that are hanging in the outfield, like how how do those proceeds that work? benefits the Silver Knights? Uh, and how about um, is there like a Matt Doobie Field? Um, and there's like a bunch of banners kind of in the back of the uh, uh, fencing there. Um, mm -hmm. How how's that administered? That one that is a Cal Ripken Field, and that benefits Cal Ripken. Okay. And what about? Um, the banners on the batting cage at, at this particular field by Holman? Uh, Cal Ripken. Cal Ripken. Okay. Um, and so so that program where we have banners in the outfield at, at a couple of fields, that's man, that's managed fully by Cal Ripken? They put the banners up, or how does that work? Except LaJoy. LaJoy is Little League. That, okay. um, all the banners there benefit Little League. In so they, they, they all have particular, now Murrayfield is not used exclusively by Cal Ripken, it's used by other, uh, um, but, it, but it, that is one of their primary fields, Cal Ripken's primary fields. Okay. Um, so 100% of that advertising goes to the league that, that primarily uses the field? Correct. And, and they find the advertisers? Yes. Correct. Okay. Um, I, I, I like that. Um, I just, I don't know why this particular one should be tied to the electric bill necessarily. I, I think that we should have a standardized um, approach to the advertising um, on a couple of fronts. Like on the front where we don't have someone who has a certain understanding that their advertising is going to be there for a certain period of time and then they get upset later. Um, so it should be standardized in terms of the advertising expectation, but yeah. also standardized in terms of um, how, how the funds are applied to benefit um, the, the, either the leagues or the city or some proportion. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that the location of these um, makes much of a difference to me. 
personally. Okay. Okay. We certainly can give that feedback to the aldermen that are responsible. So the motion is to approve the ordinance as written. Is that what the pleasure of the board is to vote on that? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Well, we're now into wastewater. Uh, Commissioner, excuse me, item A, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve the user warrants as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the FY24 purchase of polymer from Polydyne of Riceboro, Georgia in the amount of $730,000. Funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater, Fund Wastewater, Account Classification 61 Supplies and Materials. Dave Boucher, Wastewater Superintendent. Uh, so this is for the annual purchase of polymer at the wastewater plant. It's a product we use to aid in the drying and thickening of sludge. Uh, we have different companies come in and test their product. It's a proprietary product. Uh, so far, Polydyne has a product that's worked the best in drying our sludge, which benefits us having a dry sludge and shipping. Um, Polydyne is the company we've been using. We think to continue to use them. Okay. Answer any questions? Any questions, discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. Now we're on to solid waste. Item A, Commissioner Shea. Um, the motion is to approve change order one to contract with SCS Field Services of Reston, Virginia uh, to construct an expansion of the landfill gas collection system in the amount of $479,060. Funding will be through Department 168 Solid Waste Fund Bond Activity Landfill Gas Expansion. Mr. LaFleur. Jeff LaFleur, Superintendent of Solid Waste. Uh, this is exactly what it states. It's a landfill gas expansion. We do these quite often to uh, mitigate any uh, odor complaints or any emissions from the uh, landfills. Uh, this one's also going to help us tie in with a, with a header line. So. Uh, will be prepared if a, a failure happens that I can collect from two different sides of the, uh, the landfill. Anyone? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Lemon. Motion is to award a contract to Northeast Scale Company, Incorporated of Hooks at New Hampshire, to replace the inbound scale and refurbish the equipment for the outbound scale at the Four Hills Landfill. The total cost not to exceed $186,644. Funding is through Department 168 Solid Waste Fund Bond Activity Southwest Landfill Scale Replacement. Jeff LaFleur, Superintendent of Solid Waste. Uh, the intent was to uh, replace both our scales. Uh, these are 30 plus years old. We're ready for a catastrophic breakdown and we don't want that to happen. Uh, when they came in to assess the, the, the scales, they noticed that the outbound scale is in perfectly good condition. We just need to do some uh, refurbs to it, a little bit of uh, electronics and some little stuff, so we save some money there. Uh, this will be a complete replacement of the inbound scale. Uh, this is us just trying to uh, be proactive instead of reactive. If something ever fails, that's our money maker, the scales. So. All right. Questions, comments? Oh, oops, Commissioner. Sorry, I'm always slow at that hand. You wait till I'm about I, to I call me. <laughs> just stop looking. The, uh, so, so for uh, for our our weights, um, how we've we been doing with revenue? Just just ballpark. I, I know that we significantly increased. Um, I'm just I'm just curious as to how that compares to the cost to update the scales. Not that they're necessarily connected. But. Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, Jeff LaFleur, Superintendent of Solid Waste. 
if, if you're referring to the uh, C and D pricing that we yeah. raised, we're taking in about half as much, uh, maybe a third of the demo that we used to take in, but we're right at the same amount of pricing. So it's it's actually evening out, um, and it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do: is to remove the C and D coming into our landfill, eating up airspace. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Now we have engineering. Uh, item A, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve that sewer service permits and fees as submitted. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve the following poll license petitions as listed in the staff report. I think I'm correct on that one. Yeah. 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 Okay. Although the, the words the following should not really be there, but um, we approve the poll license petitions as listed in the staff report. Yeah. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, item C, Commissioner Lennon. Motion is to approve a drain layers license for Rycor Concrete and Civil Incorporated of Raynham, Mass, in accordance with Nashua City Code 255-19, issuance of drain layers license, and author authorize the Division of Public Works to temporarily suspend the license if work is found to be unsatisfactory during an initial six-month probationary period. Mr. Hudson? <clears throat> sure. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Dan Hudson, City Engineer. Um, so this is, as stated, uh, to, to grant a train layers license. This contractor submitted an application package. We checked references. Everything checked out. Uh, as is standard practice now, we're requesting the right to rescind their license for the first six months if they do unsatisfactory work, but we don't anticipate that. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item D, Commissioner Moriarty. Mm -hmm. Move to approve the purchase and installation of grid smart overhead 360 degree vehicle detection camera <coughs> system on Dan Chan Street by New England Traffic Solutions of Glastonbury, Connecticut in the amount of $24,989. Funding will be through Department 160 Admin Engineering. Fund Trust, BW Highway, Spitbrook Contributions, Account Category 71 Equipment. Uh, so Dan Hudson, City Engineer, this is, uh, we have a couple of these in this packet. Periodically we check the balance of the funds in the traffic quarter accounts. The DW Highway and uh, Spitbrook Road quarter account had built up to the point that we can afford to make some improvements. So we have two proposed. This first one is, as it says, at Dan Chan, uh, and this is where the mall uh, roadway intersects. And that location has been problematic for loops uh, because of the pavement condition. Um, uh, when a signal loop fails, it sends the signal into recall mode, which is kind of a fail-safe, but then it just goes into a pre-time program, not efficiently moving traffic by sensing the traffic and putting in a call. Um, this, this location here at Dan Chan has been a problem, so for that reason, we're proposing to put up a camera at this location. Where is Dan Chan? So um, it's, it's at the north end of the mall. There's the, the uh, internal roadway of the mall comes around and it connects. So like at this location, you, you turn, there's a signal at DW and then there's another signal at that internal oh. intersection. That's actually a brief, that's a short little street there, uh, Dan Chan. Okay. So this is the, the one that's uh, on the mall side. You used to be able to just to say to Singapore. Commissioner <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, I'm trying to be quick with the hand. The, um, so, so I've asked these questions before, but just to reiterate, um, these cameras are not capable of uh, collecting uh, license plate data <coughs> or identifying individual vehicles. Um, and is there any recording involved? It's just, there is recording? No, there is, sorry, it, I meant to say. Yeah, so it's just, it's just, but you can do like live traffic monitoring, is that right? That, yeah, that's an excellent question, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, um, again, uh, the video is, 
the video is not of high quality to be able to pick off license plates. The video and the camera is actually better than what they push out to view. For that reason, they kind of they use the higher quality to do the detection well, but then they dumb down the video feed that gets pushed out if you want to remote into it and look at it. Mm -hmm. This does have the capability to remote in and view the video. You know, if we get a complaint uh, about traffic operations, we can connect in, we can see what's going on and make adjustments. Um, as appropriate or send out the right response to whatever the issue is. Um, we do not record the video uh, from these cameras. It's only on a uh, as-needed basis as we check in to, to check on something. Okay. Good. So from like a, like a citizen uh, privacy standpoint, um, you know, there's no real concerns there. It's, it's really, it just does what it does. And, yeah, just yeah. just me or tra senior traffic engineer watching them drive by in their car. That's all. Okay. That's all. All it is. But but. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I know you'd answered that before, but I just want to no, confirm a, each time. It's good to up. each time. Note that for the record. I appreciate the question. Thank you. Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Ah, uh, I just wanted to. Uh, you bring up a very good uh, point, Commissioner Shea. Uh, as you know, like the state of New Hampshire has uh, open tolling where a picture is taken, mm -hmm. but the state does not fund, you know, save those, you know. Uh, they're destroyed, I think, within, you know, a matter of seconds, unless there is a violation, yep. you know, and everything. So there's all already a state law involved with that. So I think we would be in violation of that state law if we did record it, you know, for no particular, you know, yep. just saving or something like that. Yeah, I know we, like, privacy here in New Hampshire especially, um, and it's important. And now with like, you, you've got this kind of AI analysis of metadata stuff coming down the line. So it's, it's I think, ever more important to be mindful of, of privacy. So thank you. All right, anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item E, Commissioner Shea. Um, the motion is to approve uh, the purchase and installation of a grid smart overhead 360 degree vehicle detection camera system on Spitbrook Road by New England Traffic Solutions of Glastonbury, Connecticut in the amount of $24,989. Uh, funding will be through Department 160 Admin Engineering Fund Trust uh, DW Spitbrook, Spitbrook uh, Contributions um, Account Category 71 Equipment. So again, this is the same situation as the other camera, that there is a loop that's bad there that was damaged through some uh, repairs that were done on the private street. Um, this location is a, is a heavily traveled location. It's kind of the main entrance up to uh, the whole development there, uh, developed by Flatley. So this will, uh, this will make sure we have good traffic operations there, but also give us the ability to do traffic counts and uh, over time, you know, evaluate how traffic patterns change based upon the various things happening in that area of the city. So we think it's, uh, it's a good location for a camera, and that's why we are requesting uh, approval of that. Anyone? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Item F, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve change order one for the 2000, the 2022 Pavement Preservation Program to Seal Coating Incorporated, doing business as Indus of Braintree, Mass, in an amount not to exceed $43,120.08, funding through department. Hmm. <laughs> it's it's missing a number there. there. Yeah. It's a lot to, to get that sorted out. But uh, so this is a change order to a contract uh, for crack sealing last year through Indus, as noted. Um, they have a little bit of money left over from last year's contract, and we're seeking to supplement that with additional funds so, so that we can crack seal about 14 miles of city streets this year. Um, they held their pricing from last year, so it's just a continuation of last year's contract in, in essence. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Item G, Commissioner Moriarty. Move to approve the installation of a mid-block pedestrian crossing on Pine Street between Myrtle Street and Pine Street Extension. 
<clears throat> so this, uh, this we're bringing to you um, for your review. It's actually a project being led by community development and economic development. Um, they've been working with uh, Engineering Consultant VHB to install a pedestrian crossing, uh, the thought being providing a more direct pedestrian crossing from Clock Tower Place across to uh, Pine Street Extension where you'd walk down to Mine Falls Park. Pretty, uh, pretty uh, big demand for that crossing, people cross there. There is a signal just to the north, but people don't, don't make the effort of walking the additional distance. Yeah. Um, so they seek the safer crossing. We, uh, I've, I've uh, they prepared a study. I've reviewed it. We're comfortable with it, uh, it as long as it's installed in accordance with this plan, which involves putting a raised island at the beginning of the short left turn lane for Clock Tower Place. So that'd be a pedestrian refuge, similar to what we have on Main Street. Um, there'll be uh, rectangular rapid flashing beacons installed, so people could push the button, cross all the way or halfway, uh, as it may be. Um, to get across the street there safely, so that's the that's the proposal, and we wanted to bring it to you for uh, approval. Um, if approved, th this is being funded through com community development block grant funds. Um, should should you approve it, then they're proceeding to through final design, and we'll advertise the project for construction, hopefully later this year. Shea. We don't want to go Hodger Macuzzi on the uh, Refuge Island. The uh, I, I believe that's the technical name, of the shape of the, the islands on Main Street. Um, but but the Z the Z formation crosswalk. Um, did you talk about that at all? Or uh, no, we didn't talk about that a lot. But I, I don't I, I wouldn't have an objection to that I do understand why that's beneficial. So I mean, in the final, we do we are, I do have a little limited amount of space here to work with. Mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to encroach too much on each of the left turn lanes. There's a competing left turn lane to the north. But yeah, in the final uh, final review of the project, that may be something that we can accommodate. And th there are not current tip downs there, right, that we're trying to work with, with if there are new um, tip downs. For Correct. That, yeah. It doesn't really show in this plan, but part of the project is to build those tip downs and put in the detectable warning devices, and then it'd also be uh, some sort of a little path connection to get them across the grass area between the sidewalk and the... Uh, Pine Street extension so that that pedestrian route can happen. Um, can, can you share with us the benefit of a Z formation crosswalk? Just because I know that intuitively when people see that on Main Street, it just it just boils some blood and they're like, why is that? That's ridiculous. I don't, it makes no sense to me. Well, um, I, but, but there yeah. is a, a reason why, why for is it. So, so on Main Street, like on the bridge, um, we've got the crosswalk that approaches, um, and then at the refuge, there's a, a like an angle, um, and then the, it shifts and, and continues. Um, and there's a benefit to it, but it's not it it it's not something that would occur to you just looking at it. There's some uh, engineering and human behavior stuff behind. Yeah, it. my thank you. My understanding of it is, you know, it kind of orients a pedestrian in a, in a in a direction as they approach the crossing to kind of visually point them towards where traffic is. So not, I mean, traffic is, needs to, is, is uh, to yield to the pedestrian, they're required to, but uh, it makes mo a lot of sense to make sure the pedestrian's aware of what's happening traffic-wise, in case somebody do does fail to yield um, for their own protection. So it, it, it uh, kind of turns the pedestrian a little bit, facing them in the direction of the oncoming traffic um, before they make the, their maneuver um, to kind of improve that pedestrian to vehicle uh, Connection. I mean, the vehicle person looking at the uh, pedestrian, you know, yep. locking eyes helps to, uh, you know, re reaffirm that safety of that crossing. Yeah, there's a lot of, um, but aside from our blinkers and aside from our, our brake lights, there's a lot of uh, body language and communication that happens on the road that we don't think too much about. Right. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, if it's if it can be accommodated, I, I think it's great. It would enhance safety to that, you know whatever degree that, that improves things. Um, so, thanks. Okay. Anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, next item is uh, item H, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve change order two to the 2022 CIPP lining program 
uh, with Kenyon Pipeline Inspections, LLC of Queensbury, New York, in the amount not to exceed $950,000. Uh, funding will be through Department 169 Wastewater Fund Wastewater Activity Sewer Rehab. Um, so this is, a, <clears throat> as proposed, was change order with Kenyon. Actually, we are, we're contemplating tabling this, uh, depending on the board's pleasure, today. Um, this was a recent issue up at Merrimack uh, Valley High School in Concord. Uh, it wasn't Kenyon, but another lining contractor was lining, and um, some noxious fumes got into the school up there, and um, a number of kids got you know, headaches and felt ill and that sort of thing. We are trying to learn more about it. That's why we were maybe suggesting tabling this today. We're trying to learn more about it so we can come back better informed and make sure that that sort of situation doesn't happen here in Nashua. Preliminary understanding is that due to the weather conditions, uh, kind of suppress the exhaust fumes, you know, from getting up and, uh, and, and leaving the area. They kind of stayed in the area and got taken in by the school intake, uh, air intake. But again, that's, that's only from what we've read in the paper. We're trying to engage um, engineering department up in Concord to better understand what happened there. So, um, so you're asking us to table? This yeah, yes. I think uh, I think it's appropriate to table before we sign up and you know for a bunch more of lining. We should better understand and make sure we have provisions in place. And so, so we're comfortable with tabling this uh, to a future meeting where we can come back with some more, some answers on that. Commissioner Shea, you, could you could you feel my heart beating a little faster? <laughs> So, so when I lived in French Hill, um, we had some, some drain lining stuff happening, and I was nearby to um, a, a lot of the, the stuff that's coming out. And I've driven through areas where, where it's, um, it's coming out, and the exhaust that comes out of this process is disgusting. I don't know what's in it, um, it but it's, it's just on an intuitive basis, it's very concerning. Um, and so I, I am glad that we have cause to take pause and really look further into this. Um, and, and so I support that. So are you moving to table? I, I would move it to table. All right. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 And that matter is tabled. We now have <clears throat> item I, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to approve the engineering services contract with Wright Pierce of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, in the amount not to exceed $101,300 for the development of construction documents for renovations and repairs to the Greeley Park Stonehouse, funding through department. <laughs> 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 Something happened there. <laughs> yeah, again. Um, so this is this is uh, funding that was already set aside. So we'll figure out that funding category. But um, one hundred fifty thousand dollars have been set aside previously towards the Greeley House uh, Stone House roof. Um, we've done a study, an initial study with Wright Pierce, um, which was less than twenty five thousand dollars. But they they came in and they looked at the roof. They engaged a historic uh, um, entity as well to evaluate the historic aspects of the building. Um, the roof does need repairs. We knew that going in, so they've kind of better scoped out what that uh, effort would be for us. Uh, we are anticipating a full roof replacement, in not not the whole structure. Like the under the structure would be kind of um, uh, repaired, uh, kind of in kind. But then the whole roofing would, roofing would be replaced. The tiles would be replaced uh, with materials uh, in kind. Um, we also had them look at the bathrooms because the bathrooms are in. Uh, uh, Dated and, and could certainly use some improvements, including better ADA accommodations. Um, so what we're uh, proposing here is to take the next step in this process, which would be to actually have them further detail those uh, items and put together a package that we could use for bidding of those improvements. Um, to be fair, those we don't we don't have funding for the construction of those improvements identified yet, um, but we wanted to uh, get it to the point that was ready, and then and then. Uh, you know, address that as we as we <coughs> get to it. So that's that's the proposal. This this says it's a, a new contract may end up being actually an amendment to the existing contract. Um, but that's the proposal, and that's what we're uh, asking to do. Commissioner Shea, um, just just for further clarification, the the 101 does that include some <coughs> estimated amount for the bathrooms, or includes 
design for the bathrooms? It so it's uh, it's design of the bathrooms. This is this effort is only design and you know specifying and putting plans together suitable for bidding. So no actual construction is part of this, but this would get us to the place that we could bid it out for construction. So this does not even include the roof itself, or it does not. No. Oh wow, wow, that's a lot of money for a hundred. It is it, architects and engineers, and you know, providing uh, putting together contracts suitable to engage the the other folks. You know, um, like I would I would like to think that uh, bathroom update and the roof itself would cost a hundred thousand um, dollars. But but I mean I'm not I'm not operating in this space every day, so I don't you know I. Our, our current estimate is on the order of five hundred to thousand to a million dollars to do all the work that's anticipated, and that's not that's not like expanding the building or doing anything like that. It's replacing the roofs and doing the the modifications. So that's really that's really why we want to take a more detailed step to further refine that and um, and put together a package. I mean, we never know what these things cost exactly until you bid it out. The state of construction now is very challenging. We've bid out some projects that we got no bids on recently um, but that we'll probably put out. We want them to do this year. We'll probably put them out for next year's construction. I mean, it's uh, engineers are busy. Contractors are busy. Everybody's suffering staffing uh, issues. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's a challenging industry right now. But, but we, do, we do anticipate this is going to be a, a non-inexpensive project to complete. And there's the... the premium on uh, kind of doing it within spec of the, the historic uh, nature of the building, right? Yes. Um, and, and I suppose with the, with the historic nature of the building, there's a lot of like considerations in terms of structural integrity that really do require some, some expert measurement and, and design. And um, that's, just, that's just amazing. Be because what, what is that building? Like, uh, like 1,600 square feet? Or something like that. Um, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not a large building, but it, it's the nature of construction. You know, the the, the repairs. They they I forget the wood types they were talking about. It was uh, maybe red cedar or mahogany. Uh, was the, the the wood repairs need to be made with those type of materials? Um, you know, it's well before uh, pre um, pre treated timbers and things like that. So so yeah, it's in the roof. Uh, I mean, a tile roof like that's going to be expensive to, to do, but, but we, to preserve the, uh, and respect the historic nature of the building, our intent is to kind of do, do the same thing as what's there, um, but bring it up to a state that'll last another hundred years. You know? I was going to say, is this yeah. the first time that roof's been repaired since the building was installed? And yeah, there's a little bit of work that had done, been done in the back, and the bathrooms were kind of an add-on, um, so that, that roof, in the back, it's like a uh, asphalt roof. Our intention is to... Um, redo all the main structure with tile, um, the, the clay tile, but then the back roof probably maybe a metal roof because it's kind of a low pitch, um, a metal roof which will have longer longevity than the asphalt that was on there. Especially in the, in the shade and, and uh, the yes. kind of the moisture that's retained back there. Correct. Um, so we can have some solace in the idea that this may be a hundred year roof um, yes. at least for the cost. Thanks. Anyone else? <coughs> All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, item J, Commissioner Moriarty. The motion is to approve the installation of a left turn lane to 848 West Holland Street. Um, so when, uh, when we did the traffic study for this site, um, one of the recommendations was to continue the left turn lane configuration that's at the main landfill entrance down to this entrance. Uh, of course, that did contemplate, you know, future uh, future expansion of the of the use with bringing the street department over here. But what we found is it is, uh, you know, a little challenging to make that left turn. Uh, there's no turn lane there. A lot of the West Hall Street corridor has a center turn lane or a left turn accommodation, so that's better. But it kind of tapers out at the end of this landfill entrance, and there isn't any. Um, so what we've done is uh, we've put together a concept, uh, concept for a left turn line, which is upside down. But the gray, the gray is the, uh, our new facility entrance, and then, the, and then the yellow will be the area of the roadway, which we would 
uh, revised to include that electron one. So the other lamp, the uh, Four Hills lamp, lamp lamp, which is over here, you can see it has a left turn lane, and we would uh, do a short section of center turn lane and then convert to an exclusive left turn lane for the facility here, and then it would take it back down um, to, to uh, just a two-way uh, travel pattern to further past the entrance. Um, so that's the uh, that's the proposal. We wanted to bring it to you, um, kind of get your blessing on moving forward. It would require a Board of Aldermen resolution and approval. But before we took it to them, we wanted to make sure that the Board of Public Works was in support of the change. I think it's anticipated we probably mill this section of the roadway. I mean, it's kind of a, the main part of the roadway had been paved and the outside wasn't. And there's going to be enough restriping things going on here to probably do to a uh, you know, thin mill and, and then restrike that area. So that's, that's the proposal, and I'd be happy to address any questions about it. Uh, yes, Mr. Mario. Yes. I just want to, will the work be done in-house by Public Works? Uh, yeah, I think that's the, the intention. I mean, we have, we have, we'll probably sub out the paving to one of our paving contractors, since it's, uh, you know, heavy arterial roadway here, and it's, it, it's a bit of milling, I mean, um, so we will probably have it paid by a contractor, the striping. Also, we have contracts with striping companies, so we'll figure that out. But I, uh, it, it may be that we do a lot of that. I mean, some of the, like the turn arrows and the onlys and things, we might be able to do some of that in-house. Uh, but it may be more efficient to do uh, some, of it, some of it with contractors. So, uh, again, yeah. I because I know, I know we're having a study done now, right, on West Hollow Street, so will this be part of now, that study by the engineering company, or no? So we're just getting started with that study. We've collected traffic count data, which I, I haven't even received yet, but um, this is within the limits of that quarter study. It runs all the way from Riverside all the way to uh, Hollis. Um, so, I mean, this, this, could be, this could be deferred, I suppose, as part of that study, but, I mean, I think... Uh, we know that we have a, a left turn accommodation issue here that this would improve. Uh, I don't foresee anything coming out of that study which would say this wasn't a good idea, you know. So uh, um, this is and this is this is something that I've really advocated for. It's very it's really dangerous yeah. to try to turn in here, especially in the morning and at night when it's really busy. Um, so I think for the safety of our staff and also residents coming uh, to the facility, we really should have that left turn lane. I was wishing for a left turn lane as I was coming here today. <laughs> yeah, you sorry. sort of. Yeah, so yeah, you like, sort of look behind you, hoping that someone yeah, yeah, look I'm at like, it. Like, pay attention. I'm like, yeah. signaling to the guy behind me. You know, see yeah. my Yeah, on. so you experience that as well. Yeah. And the width of the road at at that site is the same as it is wide at the entrance to the current landfill. Yes. Yeah. yeah what this yeah. concept, you know, we have. Uh, 12 foot travel lanes, the, the turn lane is 10 feet wide, and then the shoulders are four and a half to five and a half feet. So the road's wide enough to accommodate this, certainly. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next item K, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve a use and occupancy agreement for placement of building awnings within the right of way over entrances at four, five, and six Sanders streets for Riverfront Landing phase two. So Riverfront Landings is uh, currently under construction on a new project over on Sanders Street. It went through the planning board process. Um, I think previously uh, the board approved um, shared maintenance responsibilities relative to the street because they, uh, they're they widening the street, providing parking, and there's some uh, forest pavement, that sort of thing. So anyway, all that stuff was kind of addressed before, but the thing that hasn't been addressed is um, some of the buildings have awnings which are going to extend over the sidewalk, and in speaking with uh, our legal staff, anytime that um, that's the case and it's less than 12 feet of clearance, then, then um, they've suggested that we should uh, enter into a use and occupancy agreement to allow that encroachment in the right of way. Um, so for that reason, we bring this forward. There is a draft uh, use and occupancy agreement in here. This has not yet been reviewed by legal. We need to, need to do that. Um, and seeking their approval of that, so that's one of the, one of the conditions here of approval that, that would uh, 
before this got finalized, that they that would go through a review by our legal department. I'd be happy to address any questions. Uh, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, far from me to question any engineer, but uh, I think uh, motor vehicle law says for tractor trailer trucks, 13.6. Will this meet the 13.6 requirement? I don't know. Santa Street isn't that now. You say the I got to expand the width. Um, it's just that I don't know if they're going to have trailer trucks down there. I imagine maybe for loading and offloading of uh, movers in the like, you know, but so are we these, concerned about the right of passage of the street? Not in this case because these don't extend out over into the roadway. They're, they're only par extend partially over the sidewalk. Um, okay. the, and, and then next to the sidewalk is a parallel parking uh, uh, area, so it's it's well away from Thank the roadway you. itself. And these awnings um, were shown, I'm sure, in all the their approval plans. So I'm sure Fire and others have had an opportunity to review that as part of the building permit process. It's just this uh, this this approval uh, portion here was has not had not been addressed, and that's why we're bringing it forward. All right, uh, Commissioner Shea. Thank you. Um, I, I generally like awnings over sidewalks. I think the, the more awnings we can have over sidewalks, the better. Um, it's it's nice to have a little bit of refuge in the rain, um, like when you're walking down Main Street, and um, I think it adds a, a bit of interest uh, to the architect for the building. And I think it's nice, and it's really exciting to see this, this project moving forward, because uh, I know it's been uh, kind of percolating for, for over a decade, so um, I, I will support this. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> Item L, Commissioner Lemon. The motion is to consider the hardship request from Liberty Utilities to excavate to replace critical gas main in Lake Street and to reconsider the hardship request for 303 Main Street. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll introduce this, and then we do have a representative from Liberty Utilities here, but um, you may recall back in January, we bought, January we brought a uh, request for a moratorium waiver next to Port Pierre's. Um, there's a development, redevelopment happening there. Um, they had requested to redo the sidewalk um, along their property. Uh, basically, that was a uh, city staff request for them to redo the sidewalk in that area, but it, it meant that they were going to need a moratorium waiver. Um, so the board voted voted that down, and um, that project's continuing, kind of how it ended up. I know there was some discussion at the time about, you know, would this send them back to planning board or whatever. What ended up happening was that, that the development continued to move forward, but that portion of the work was going to be bonded for a number of years until the... Uh, until the uh, in, until the uh, moratorium was up, and then they would do the work, and then um, they would have fulfilled all their site conditions. So that's kind of how it ended up going. Um, so that there's that part of it, and I only bring that up because part of this uh, there's a that, there's an issue with Liberty uh, Gas in this same section of roadway. Um, they they have some uh, G2 leaks, which we would you know or ordinarily approve without coming to the board because of the permission that's been granted that way because they need to get that work done. Um, and as coincidence would have it, uh, Liberty ha does have a gas gas work that they want to do on the street there. It has been a problematic location, so they want to run some gas main up the street um, to replace this section of problem pipe. Um, and uh, I guess I'll have Liberty come speak more to it because they're more familiar with that. But my understanding is that helps them Get out of Main Street. We do intend to pave, pave Main Street in the next few years. But the request here is mostly for uh, Liberty Utilities to be able to do what they need to do. But since they would need to go in and restore this moratorium area anyway, we're asking the board to reconsider the 303 Main Street um, to enable the sidewalk work to be done at the same time. They also have a sewer service that could use some repair. Um, so hopefully all the work in that area could be done and then the road restored under the moratorium criteria. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Nate from Liberty to speak more about the gas main issues. How's it going? Nate Cody with Liberty Utilities. Thanks for that layup. <laughs> Sorry. Um, as you can, uh, oh, yep. 
So yeah, there's a lot going on in this area. Um, so basically, uh, we're looking to do a main replacement down Main Street. And uh, this is a small uh, little leg of cast iron gas main off of Main Street that we'd also like to replace at the same time. Uh, there's been some leaks there recently. Um, so we just figured while we're in the street, we'd try to get the whole section of uh, cast iron uh, gas main. Uh, so that's what this is a proposal for. All right, questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, next, Thanks we've got so item M, uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Motion is to consider the hardship request from Alpha Contracting Services on behalf of Larry Kittle to excavate to install sewer, water, and gas services at 58 Chandler Street. <clears throat> So I, I'll uh, let the applicant speak to this. I believe this was a small subdivision and that was a lot of record that they want to develop, but can you, uh, can you sp speak to the uh, hardship nature of this request? It's, uh, my name is Helton. Uh, it's a subdivision lot that we, my client bought back in 2021. Uh, and as we just noticed it, there's a moratorium back in 2020 until 2025. And the city already approved the subdivision in the city, already approved for us to build it up. But then we, we need the permission to open up the street and install gas, the gas, the water, and the sewer line. We are gonna use like a partnership that I used to do all the uh, site work here in Nashua, it's my partner Kevin Corville. They always, we're always working together. So he's gonna be the guy who's run the site for me and I will run the, the construction site. Any board members have questions or comments? I'm just trying to picture where this is. Yeah. Can we get a, um, a cell phone tower on the landfill? Is <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Wi-Fi working? What's that? No, there, there's just no, the, the, we actually it's a do dead have zone. <laughs> we do have one here, but they've delayed the 5G yeah. installation and the 4G yeah. stuff is starting went, to crap out. Yeah. We don't have good service in yeah. this building. So 58 Chandler, it's, um, is it past Lock Street up the hill or before Lock Street? I think it's going up Lock, I guess it's, go, it's, it's going, going, up, going the hill? up Lock Street after, it's going up the hill towards, after Lock towards, Street. Towards, what is that, towards Layton? I think. The 70 is up a little further. Okay, well, I will not have a, I will not have a map on my phone. So yeah. it, it shows us south of Lock Street. Dan, do you want to bring it up on GIS? Um, sure. I can try. I can try. Is, is this a subdivision of a, a property that is larger and has a building on it? Yeah, it's a subdivision. Yeah, okay. yeah it was a larger lot that got subdivided. So maybe is it a teardown or are you going to just... No, I'm no. just going to bring it up on Google Maps if I can. Oh. It's a house okay. there. You know, 54. It, it, know, so. Is it a parking lot for the building currently? Yeah, parking yeah. No, no buildings will be a parking lot, yeah. <laughs> that, is, that is a special Still kind of <laughs> special kind of work there. Oh, it's that big green field back there. Yeah. That's such a curious property in this, this area right here, yeah. So that home was, was, um, was it sold recently or, or purchased? The property was purchased like in the last 
12 last, months? Yeah, now this, I think 2000, yeah, 2021. 2021. How many units is, are you? Just one, one, one. One house? One house, yeah. <coughs> and, um, and did you already sell that, that existing home? Yeah. Did you yeah. subdivide the lot and yeah. sell the existing yeah, home? Yeah, sold, yeah. Um, Is this a single family home that you're building? Yes, yeah, single family. Yeah. And Chandler's paid in 2020? 2020, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are we yeah. Good that? No. Yeah, I, I know exactly where that is. The, um, I mean, I, I don't know. If I may. Yes. Um, so I, I think it's great. I think that um, I've always looked at that little piece of land and thought to myself that would make a nice like little city park. Um, and it, and it's, it was always curious to me. It was like, does it belong to that house? Who, who owns that piece of property? Who knows? Um, I, I think <coughs> it's especially good um, to kind of enhance the balance of, of single family homes. Would you, would you look to continue to own this property and rent, rent it, or would you look to sell it? My, my client will, will keep it, it's probably gonna be rent. Yeah, Yeah. okay. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of, a lot of parcel development um, in that neck of the woods, especially down by BAE with uh, a couple of multi-units, a couple of um, like townhome style um, units and, um, it's good. When are when are we doing? What's the status of the um, Whitney and and Lock uh, mm. project? <laughs> it's taking a while. Yeah, we we uh, yeah. we're still we're still in the process of uh, getting that off the ground. Basically, we have an engineer selected. Um, there was a question about funding and uh, what the project was, so we. Um, we had to go back and redo kind of a conceptual estimate. Anyway, long story short, we'll be starting that project soon in terms of design process. It'll probably take a year and a half, two years to get through that process before we're in construction. Okay. Are you Helton? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we didn't catch your name. It, it, he's he's uh, the one that sent the letter. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So I have a question there. Yes. Uh, so if this is approved by this board, when do you plan on starting? So, soon, I, soon I'll pass the, the pre-construction meeting site, I can start. Anytime. And if, if this is not approved, the, the project can't really move forward because there's no access to gas, right? Right. Yeah. Of course, I'm in favor of, uh, of these type of projects, but according to the ordinance, you're supposed to tell us what your hardship is so we approve it. Why, why should we approve this? What is your hardship? So you didn't really say anything about a hardship. Why we should you approve this? So what kind of, where, uh, I mean, is there a hardship on your, on your end? So that's what we need to know. To, to wait in here. What can I tell? I think we May I piggyback and ask a question? Yes, go ahead. Um, if, if you were not to develop this property and continue owning it, um, w would you be responsible for paying the taxes for the next two or three years and in the meantime not being able to draw income off of the property? If you want a low pop, if I'm, go I'm just representing my client. It probably is going to keep paying the tax definitely. Yeah. He always paid, so. He's not at, he doesn't have only one place, so he will keep paying. But it will be a, for him, it's a good investment. And for, for the city, it's another house that we can rent. We know we are short, short and uh, residents in the city, so we try to, to fit. So it would cost, it would cost 
thousands of dollars over the next several years to just own the property and well, you yeah, wouldn't be able to do anything. Definitely, yes. They're going to keep paying tax without collecting any money. I, I would see that as a hardship, um, ha having an investment property and not being able to develop it and um, incurring the cost in the meantime. Um, so I, I would I would see that as a hardship. All right, anyone else? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, now we have an informational item, which is the street opening permits. Unless there are questions on that, we will just uh, move beyond it. Uh, administration, we have the director's report. On the first slide, uh, we have a contractor uh, waiting to mill Tinker Road, which uh, was completed on uh, June 5th. We had this is the engineering table uh, for DPW Day, which was on June 3rd. We had a sort of a lousy day for it, and we didn't, we didn't have a very big turnout, but nonetheless, uh, we held it, and you can see our deputy city engineer there uh, on the left. I actually, I think they're in the middle with our city engineer and, and Amy Gilman of our city <coughs> engineer. It's always, uh, you know, you never, you never know if we're gonna, it's going to be a success because of the weather. Um, this is uh, continental paving, um, reconstruction some ADA ramps on Lake Street, Medical Center Drive, and Trafalgar Square in May. And that's for, in preparation for our paving. This is uh, Sunshine Paving, paving Denby Drive and Edwin Street on 516 and 531 respectively. Paving program is in full swing. Um, engineering is providing inspection support, um, including of D D Antonio Drive, uh, which is intended to be accepted as a city street for the Brian McCarthy Middle School. We're doing some seasonal plantings. Uh, this is the landscape bed, as you can see in front of the band shell. We did some additional uh, plantings, which which look yeah, which look really nice. And then the median plantings, if you've been down Main Street, are looking very nice as well. The Atherton Park irrigation work um, is completed. And we're actually, we should be putting in the playground, I believe, in the next week or two. And so uh, that project will be uh, completed fairly soon, which, which will be a great addition to that neighborhood. When can we use the playground? Or can you use the playground just as soon as it's in? Hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Go bang on those drums. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I should also mention that um, St. Andrews will be going in in early July. So those two parks. Uh, yeah, I know, finally. You've been advocating a long time for that, Alderman O'Brien. Thank you. Um, there's ongoing field maintenance. Um, this is uh, lining Ro the Roby Park softball fields. Another uh, picture of opening day in DPW day. Our annual concert series began on Tuesday, June 6th. Each Tuesday we have another band performing, covering everything from rock and roll to big band sounds. This is the, um, some crosswalk work at the crosswalk near Haywards. It needed some milling. I don't know if you went over there, but it was, uh, it was pretty rough, so. We fixed that. There's um, this is a sinkhole uh, that was next to a double catch basin on Lund Road that, that was re repaired. There was some side there was some sidewalk uh, replacement that actually is still ongoing at 120 Bower Street. Uh, this is a catch basin on Autumn Glen Circle uh, that is being that was repaired. Uh, another catch basin uh, sinkhole uh, repair uh, that needed full replacement, and this was on Russell Avenue. Uh, we uh, have installed a tip down um, on the corner of Church Street at Liquid Therapy. 
it's not quite complete yet, but that'll be a good addition for them. They've, a they've asked for that for quite some time. We've done some berm installation. Uh, pictured here is uh, Century Road on the left and Dickens Street on the right. And this is to help prevent erosion. On the right, Dickens or Dickens? Um, Dickens, yep. Uh, we did pave some areas uh, in, behind this building, walkways, so that our staff can get from their trucks into the building. We cleaned up a homeless camp. <laughs> Commissioner Lemon is, is very involved so with this. A We're former homeless camp. A, for, a former homeless <laughs> camp on Crown Street. Um, we've been participating in that. There's quite a group that, get, that meets on a, at least a monthly basis, Commissioner. Uh, Lemon is in that group, and it's uh, not an easy yeah. problem to solve. So, mm -hmm. but it's good that everybody's around the table is working together to try to do what we can. Um, this is uh, some under drain at Atherton Park uh, that we installed to try to alleviate some standing water. We fixed the elevator shaft at Holman Stadium. The water, uh, the blocks were cracked and leaking water into the shaft. So. Wow. Put street putting, department repaired that, that extra mason to work yes yeah, that's great Good. Uh, we're doing some tank cleaning uh, at wastewater these are the aeration basins uh, that we take offline to clean we received a new vehicle for solid waste side load truck and we are working on the zigzag in the landfill um, this is going to will help us to eventually cap uh, phase two and phase three, but also, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice a little, will also give us a little bit of added space to in the landfill. So, charter construction has started that work. And that, this is just a picture of our solid waste employees that we're setting up for the taste of downtown. Uh, that happened. So, and that's it. And I did want to also mention that we had to make um, a couple of cuts from our budget that um, you weren't aware of, although Alderman um, O'Brien did tell me that uh, some, I think we had cut a, a one and a half truck drivers, and I believe that was added back to the budget by the Alderman. Right. Now, this has to, just <laughs> the usual caveats, yeah. has to go before the full board, but the budget yeah. committee made a recommendation to um, so that include was, it. We understand the brick wall that you guys are here trying to get people to be drivers, so, you know, we're trying to work with you. So uh, that was one of the, the cuts, but I, I don't believe that's a cut anymore. Uh, we also cut $5,000 from uh, building grounds and maintenance, which was for this building. Um, we cut um, 35000 from the engineering uh, salary line um, and um, $10,000 for uh, tree removal from our budget, so um, I don't think that those are going to be huge impacts, but nonetheless, I did want to let you know, mm -hmm. know about them. Um, the, other, the other thing, too, um, we are having a site walk with the Conservation Commission uh, for disc golf at Roby Park on July 10th at 5.30 p.m. Where? So, at, at Roby. Oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna but there's going to be out of town. There's going to be an out of town, too, but this, this is for, our, for Roby Park. The, okay. the proposed disc golf site. So, and, and to the if any of the commissioners uh, can make it, would be much appreciated to help support the project. So July tenth, and, and and Patty, maybe we can send out an email just kind of as a reminder. Mm -hmm. How how would you say the um, presentation was received the other night? I, I watched um, the it, and it was great. It was a lot of detailed information and kind of going into the project and. Um, some of the things that we've already addressed, um, you know, it sounds like we've pretty much addressed mm -hmm. the, the big areas of concern that um, drew attention to the project. Um, what was your take on um, how that meeting went? You know, I think it went relatively uh, good. I think there were a lot of people, there were a number of people there who spoke in favor, which, which was good. Um, the disc golfers came out in support. You know, there are a couple of residents who are just uh, continually just trying to kill the project, and it's unfortunate. Um, but um, there's there's been some misinformation that, that's been spread, um, again, which is unfortunate. 
I, I hope, I don't know the Conservation Commission uh, members very well, so it, it's a little bit hard for me to read them. I think that, you know, I, I'm hoping um, that they'll see that this is a great project and important uh, for our residents. So, um, but I, I, you know, I don't think it's over by any stretch of the imagination. I think we really need to um, be there and, and try to support this and, and get it passed. Now, the, I, you know, I should also mention the, the Conservation Commission is only advisory. Um, however, the, we do have to go to zoning and the, uh, the zoning board relies heavily on the Conservation Commission's recommendation. It's important that, that we that we get their support. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry. Why do you, why do you go to zoning? What, what what needs to be changed in the zone? Um, you know, I don't fully. Really, Dan, do you? Fully, sure. Do you so the the uh, the, the uh, wetlands setbacks is a function of zoning. So by by the zoning, you're not allowed to work within those wetland buffers um, without a variance. So but the CONCOM, you know, reviews what those activities are in those buffers. So you go, the process is you go to CONCOM, talk about what you're planning to do. CONCOM makes their determination, and then you go to zoning board with their CONCOM's recommendation, and they actually are the ones that approve the variance for the, the zoning uh, effort, you know, allowing the work in the, in the setback. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, what's next? Commissioner's comments. Any commissioners have comments? Commissioner well, Moriarty. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, for, for, I, I noticed over at Greeley, there's still a lot of um, park and rec vehicles there. So have we not transitioned here yet? Uh, that's correct. The We had to wait for Rick's garage to be finished, and we had a lot of uh, construction that we needed to do there to, to bring that up to building code. So we're almost done. We have one other small item, um, I think, access to the attic, Dan, that we need yeah. to we need to do, and then um, and then we'll be able to move park and rec over. It's critical for them to have that building um, to, in order to be able to store all their equipment and operate. So soon. Thank you. Hoping. But streets streets is here um, and uh, in solid ways. So we're getting there. <laughs> Mr. Shea. Um, I, I got a, a communication from a constituent about uh, the playground at Roby Park. Um, in in kind of the uh, never exactly well in the north north uh, west like corner of the park. Um, there's a couple of very large round bushes, um, and the constituent's comment was, "Hey, um, you know, is it safe?" for the kids to be hiding behind these bushes. You know, I, I and two other parents were, um, you know, we, we keep having to tell our kids to get out of the bushes. What I did tell him is that, um, you know, hide and seek and hiding, especially where there's a fence behind there and it, it's really, um, you know, a, a safe space um, is, is an essential part of play, which he, he relented to, and it, not relented, but he agreed with it. Um, so, so the bushes themselves are a non-issue. He did note that sometimes there's uh, trash back there, um, like a like a piece of glass or something like that. Okay. Um, and so, what his request was after we kind of talked through the concern um, was that when Parks goes there to to dust up the park every now and again, um, just to be mindful and look behind those bushes. Sure. Um, and, and just make sure that there's no broken glass or, or trash otherwise. I will mention that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I think the bushes are great. Just to be clear, I yeah. like, uh, we okay. like the bushes. The outcome was we like okay, the bushes. Good. We like okay. the hiding. Um, <laughs> we, we just want a couple of eyes back there, you know, once a month. Or, or Fair trash. enough. That, no, that's good feedback. We'll we'll check on that. Thank you. Um, I had to go to the Ward Three meeting, and um, the people in Jackson Falls are very unhappy about a number of things, particularly the homeless, um, yeah. the trash. And um, yeah. Tr Trish explained to them the city cannot go on the train tracks. We've had this discussion before, but they, I have to get back together with Trish. They also requested that we have signs saying that, you know, we have a noise ordinance because that would make the motorcycle riders all decide to like turn down the heat. 
Now, I don't think this will work in a million years, so I'll get back with the Trish and say, you know, it's just, a, it's going to be another sign, and it's not going to make the motorcyclists say, I best, you know, turn down. I don't, I don't know how, you, I mean, they, they're as loud as they are, so. And the police did say they have stopped a number of people, but there are certain, I guess, tricks they could do to, which I had never heard of, apparently, if you get stopped by a policeman, there's like a valve or something that you can push where the, the pipes will seem like they're less strong than they are or they don't push out as much noise. So they, mm -hmm. they are stopping people, but I don't really think a sign will help. But I I do not, I'm not looking forward to the next Ward 3 meeting where we will explain this to people. So, And okay. of course, the homeless encampments are, are you know, they're growing. We don't, we, I don't know what's gonna happen now that we still see people walking up from Crown Street, Temple Street, so this problem is not going to go away. No, not it's until not. we have enough housing. Anyone else? Oh, I do have one more thing. Commissioner Shea. Um, on Harris Road, there was some paving done um, and some restriping of um, crosswalks. And there were posts put in at, at Friar Tuck in Harris um, for like the crosswalk signs. And I think the crosswalk signs are there for a period of time, but they went away. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I don't know if those are like on order or something of that nature. Uh, but it's been we'll a couple that. of months. Okay. The posts have been there. All right, <coughs> personnel, um, item A, Commissioner Shea. Uh, the motion is to approve and unseal the non-public minutes for personnel from the BPW meeting of May 25th, uh, 2023. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion passes. Item B, Commissioner Lemon. Motion is to approve the resignation of Matthew Cusato, wastewater foreman, effective June 3rd, 2023. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Motion passes. Um, <coughs> no, I don't um, have that further. Okay. All right, so we have now a uh, non-public session motion. Commissioner Moriarty. I move by roll call that the board go into non-public session pursuant to RSA 91, A3, Roman numeral 2, D, the hiring of any person at a public meeting. And this needs to be by roll call, correct? Yes. Yes. Please uh, call the roll. Commissioner Moriarty? Yes. Commissioner Lemon? Here. Commissioner Shea? Here. Mayor Donchick? Yes. 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 All right, we're going to go into non-public session. <laughs> Commissioner Moriarty. I move by roll call to seal the minutes of the Board of Public Works personnel non-public meeting of June 22nd, 2023, until such time as the majority of the board votes that the purpose of the confidentiality will no longer be served. Commissioner Moriarty. Yes. Commissioner Lemon. Yes. Commissioner Shea. Yes. Mayor Donches. Yes. Motion passes. All right, uh, Commissioner Moriarty. Mayor, I move that we adjourn the meeting. Uh, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Uh, the meeting of the Board of Public Works is adjourned at 5.36 p.m.